Hello. Today I want to talk to you about heaven. I remember the, when I was able to swim in the Red Sea. I was visiting the resort city of Sharm El Sheikh on the very southern tip of the Sinai Peninsula. One of our members had a, a, an underwater camera and I saw countless fish of every size and shape and color and just when I thought I'd seen the most beautiful fish, along comes another, and even more striking than first. And my, as my eyes were open to the underwater world, I was silently saying, wow, every time I saw a different and colorful species, they are etched in my memory. I imagine our first glimpse of heaven will cause us to similarly gasp in amazement and delight. Our first gasp will be followed by another and another and many more as we continually encounter new sights in that endlessly wonderful place. How do we know anything about heaven? If we had no inside information, we could only speculate. Fortunately, we have some solid data to build on, divine revelation. I have never been to heaven, but I have a very good friend who has. And he came here and told us about it and showed it to us. He is called the way, the truth, and the life. Some time ago, I was talking with some friends about heaven, and one of them said, God, he really hasn't told us very much about heaven, has he? They continued by quoting the scripture that says, No eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor mind conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. They continued, obviously, we can't know anything about what God has prepared for us. But they were amazed when I told them I have at least 16 articles about heaven on my website. Then I said, when you quoted the scripture, you didn't finish the sentence. You stopped, actually at a comma. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 9 and 10, they read this way, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man anything which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us by his Spirit. And the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. On our own, we would never imagine what heaven would be like. But God has sent his Holy Spirit. What we otherwise would never have known about heaven because we are unable to see what heaven is like, God has revealed it to us through his spirit. That means that God has explained to us what heaven is like. Not exhaustively, but accurately. God tells us about heaven in his word because he wants us to understand and anticipate what awaits us. There are other biblical verses that are sometimes used to shut off discussion about heaven. For example, Deuteronomy verse, chapter 29, verse 29, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, and heaven is considered as one of those secret things. But again, the rest of the verse is rarely quoted. De Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, read, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. Now, I do accept it. Many things about heaven are unknown, and that God has countless surprises in store for us there. But he has, in fact, revealed many things to us about heaven, and, th and this verse tells us that they belong to us and to our children forever. Therefore, since he has revealed them to us, it's important that we study and understand them. This is precisely why God revealed them to us. Another silencer of discussion about heaven is found in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 2 to 4. Paul says that 14 years earlier he was caught up to paradise where he heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. Some use this verse to say we should not discuss what heaven will be like. But all this says is that God didn't permit the Apostle Paul to talk about his visit there. In contrast, God commanded us to read and understand what John wrote about heaven, which he did in great detail in the book of Revelation. Likewise, Isaiah and Ezekiel wrote about what they saw in heaven. While it may be inappropriate for us to discuss or speculate what Paul may have seen in heaven, 
it certainly is appropriate for us to discuss what John saw in heaven because God chose to reveal them to us. It truly is beyond our imagination to know and envisage all that God has prepared for us in heaven. But those things he has revealed can indeed be imagined and anticipated. I have attended two Bible colleges, but I learned very little about heaven in either of them. I did take a course in the book of Revelation, but we never got to chapter 21 and 22 in, in that course, which talk a lot about heaven. Even pastors may not think it's important to address the subject of heaven because they, sim they similarly had training that didn't require a course in heaven and uh, any or any electives. Similarly, pastors that don't preach in heaven may cause their congregations to assume that the Bible doesn't say much about heaven. But Colossians 3 verse 1 says, Set your heart on things above, for Christ is seated at the right hand of God. This is a direct command to set our hearts on heaven and to make sure that we don't miss the pro uh, what he's saying, the importance of heaven-centered life. The next verse continues by saying, set your mind, not just your heart as in verse 1, but set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. God commands us to use our hearts and our minds, set them on heaven. To long for Christ is to long for heaven, for that is where we will spend eternity with him. God's people, according to Hebrews 11:16 are looking for a better country than where we are today. We cannot set our eyes on Christ without setting our eyes on heaven. And we cannot set our eyes on heaven without setting our eyes on Christ. Thinking of heaven has at least five practical effects on our life here on earth. Number one, focusing on heaven restores our hope during times of suffering, Romans 8 verse 18. Number two, Focusing on heaven reassures us that God is on the throne, Revelation 4, verse 1. 3. Focusing on heaven reminds us that this world is not all there is, Philippians 3.20. 4. Focusing on heaven refocuses us on the nature of true treasures, true riches, Matthew 6, verse 19 and 20. Number 5. Focusing on heaven reignites our fervor to serve the Lord. I Everything connected to our spiritual life and destiny is in heaven. Our Father is there, our Savior is there, our Comforter is there. Our fellow believers are there, our name is there. Our life is there, our inheritance is there. Our home is there, our citizenship is there. Our reward is there, our treasure is there. Everything that belongs to us is there. The command to think about heaven today is under attack in so many different ways every day. Everything mitigates against thinking about heaven because it's so easy to keep our mind and our hearts on the things of earth, not heaven. Our mind are so much set on earth that we are unaccustomed to heavenly thinking. So we must work at it. When a person really takes the time to look into the subject of heaven, Many different questions come to mind about that destination, such as, is heaven a real place? And if it's real, where is it located? Who are its inhabitants now? And who will be its inhabitants later? What are the attractions of heaven? Will we know each other in heaven? What will we do in heaven? Is present heaven a physical place? Will we desire relationship with anybody but God? What will we know and learn in heaven? What kind of bodies will those who go to heaven have? How old will we be in heaven? Will there be animals in heaven? Will we actually be able to see God when we get there? Can I know for sure that I am going to heaven? Will the dimension of time be in heaven? Will we still be male and female in heaven? Are we all equal in heaven? Do those in heaven know what is happening and going on down here on earth right now? These and many other questions beg for answers. And the questions just mentioned are all answered in the Bible. Fortunately, 
We do not have to die to discover God's truth about heaven. The Bible really does tell us a great deal about that place. The words heaven, heavens, and heavenly occurs over 700 times in the Bible, so we really are not left in the dark about this place. In the upcoming videos, we'll say more about this destination. I, pr I pray that everyone that's re hearing this video will be going someday, that we will be see each other in heaven. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the promise of redemption and eternity with you. I pray you'll be with everybody that saw this video and that you will give them peace and comfort. Help them to all be ready. Thank you for your good goodness to us. In your name we pray. Amen.